On today's show, a research team builds a heart in a lab from scratch. You can become a robot pilot if you happen to be in Japan. And Portal is back in a way you've never seen it before. Woo! Love that GLaDOS. Surround Daily. <laughs> Greetings, citizens of the internet. Welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. I'm Ashley Skeva. That's Kale Anonymous. Say your thing. Say the thing you said. I want GLaDOS. Actually, I would more, even more. No, just more, say, the, say your thing. I want GLaDOS to be my navigation. And you can, because there's there's like, um, it's like Tom, if you get Tom a GPS, right? yeah, Garmin. When, when you, and you download it, and it tells you the opposite direction you're supposed to be going. That's so just it's like, like GLaDOS. If you're supposed to turn right, it's like turn left now, or do a U-turn if you're supposed to keep Driving going straight. Driving on coming traffic. Yeah, it's really it's really like doesn't help you out at all, but it's funny. Yeah, so. I love that so much. I would like uh, the GLaDOS voice. I would like to be able to pick that as Siri's voice in my iPhone. Oh, it's because you're almost there. And treat me like I am the worst person. Like, just be like, you're looking heavy today. Like, <laughs> I just want her to be like, I was once a potato. People like that. would pay for that. I would pay for that. That would be amazing. An add-on pack for GLaDOS as Siri. That would be glorious. Anyway, but we're not, talking about, we're not talking about Portal just yet. Not yet. Let's hit the headlines. Kale, finally my dreams can come true. I can now be a robot pilot. I can, I can go and try it out. Uh, I saw this story on Rocket News and I got really excited. Rocket News, if you're not familiar, is a site that like focuses on mostly Japanese culture, either here in the U.S. or actually in Japan. And so they um, they sent one of their reporters to go check out this 33,000 pound robot uh, called Super Godzilla on display in Tokyo at uh, at a festival that is called. And uh, this is this is the translation from Rocket News. So hopefully it's 100% correct. Odaiba Dream Continent Dream Mega Summer Festival, um, which I feel like they should make a music festival and bring to the US. Mm -hmm. uh, so there were lots of booths, all different kinds of stuff, and this robot was part of that. Uh, again, 33,000 pounds, about 13 feet tall. It's heavier than Karatas, Suidobashi Heavy Industries robot that's gonna fight that other mega robot next yeah, year. It's heavier? It's heavier than that robot Jeez. Um, by quite a bit. And uh, they let you pilot it. Like you can actually get in and pilot it. But there is a total catch to this. So oh boy. obviously they don't want you jumping in there and rolling around the festival, the, the dream, dream continent, dream mega summer festival. They don't want you rolling around there and like crushing people and stuff. So what they do is they put you inside the cockpit of the actual robot because see these like giant claws that it has. Yeah. They put you in the cockpit and you put on an Oculus Rift. And they have- what? They have they have uh, joysticks on each side, and the seat is hydraulic controlled. So when you're moving, it actually feels like the entire robot is moving. Like they've designed it for the seat and everything to move as if you are moving in the robot. And apparently, the um, the interface is like incredibly realistic, really really cool. And uh, the seat again moves as you control it, and um, and so that's how they that's how they let you be a robot pilot for a thirty three thousand pound robot. But I mean, you gotta start somewhere. You gotta train. You gotta train. You can't just take a giant robot out. So let me let me get this straight. You don't actually pilot the robot. Well, you're piloting it in virtual reality. So to answer the question, no. No, yeah, no, you're not really piloting but it. But can the robot move for oh, real yeah, though? Yeah, okay. no, they, they, they can move it around. Yeah, look, it actually, this video made me laugh really hard because they, they play this um, song from a popular Japanese pop group and it kind of dances to it. Like it's hilarious, like really entertaining. Yeah, the robot's got to dance. But no, it totally moves. It's a totally functional robot. They actually have, see all those rocks underneath, like behind that um, barrier? Yeah. It's, it crushes those rocks. Like yes. it, they put the rocks inside these claws and like smash them in half and stuff. So this is like actually functional, kind of dangerous robot. So that was the reason they like, we can't have people going around slicing people in half. Yeah, I trust no one to pilot that thing. No, not at all. That's why they give you the Oculus. And well, that's honestly, cool. Does, does it cost money to do it? Or I don't think they charge the uh, the reporter. They didn't say anything about like a fee or anything. You can just go check it out. So right. apparently, there's, I would imagine, probably a pretty good line at the uh, o Odaiba Dream Continent Dream Mega Summer Festival. That's the best. The mega Summer Dream Festival? The Dream Continent Dream Mega Summer Festival. Two dreams. You got two dreams oh in there. Oh, my God. That's the best. Best festival name ever. I want hey, Logan, are we, are we going to that? Next year. Cool. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> we'll be there next year at Odaiba. We got to go there. All right. Oh, tell man. me about okay. Portal. I'm okay. so excited. Okay. No, 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 no. Just, just, just forget that. But this is it. Okay, guys? This is the moment we've been waiting for. 
I have always said that VR to actually start selling headsets needs to create something that we want to play, mm -hmm. that that blows our minds, that we that we mm -hmm. don't want to end, and that we like it, it's we're like well, I'll get a VR headset for that. Right. And this is basically it, and it's a demo that they showed off for the uh, the HTC Vive. This is the oh, headset the that Valve is making with HTC, in which we get to experience Aperture Labs yeah. from the Portal series, like one of the best games of all times. You get to walk around the lab. There's a lot of different, um, you get to fix uh, Peabody. Um, Sherman, no wait. Atlas. Atlas, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get to fix Atlas. You get to look through uh, some different cabinets or some really funny jokes. One in which you see, oh look, there's cake. I know. And the, and the guy, life. and they do a voiceover for this and they point out the fact that the cake is moldy because that joke is old. Right. Great touch. And then of course these little tiny characters and it's a little office and you scare them. All of the humor from the Portal series so is great. in this demo. It's so only a five minute demo, but from what we can see in it, yeah, there's it has all of the charm and it explores Portal in a different way than we've seen before. You don't get the Portal gun, but you do get to go around and experience the fact that this world is interesting to a T. Right. Um, apparently watching this video, which is available and that's, that's what you're watching, it's just recorded off of it. Uh, like off a screen, but apparently this does not even begin to show why this is so awesome in VR. Yeah. Um, and that's that's the exciting thing, is we really haven't seen anything from the HTC Vive. Yeah. We've seen things from Oculus, Samsung Gear. Do you know they had a trailer at Comic-Con? Like they, an actual full trailer where they, people were able to line up and try the Vive. And I wanted to stand in that line, but it was so long. It was like outside of the convention center, like a couple blocks down by a cupcake shop. And I'm like, I want to stand in this line so bad, and I yeah. didn't get to. That would have been worth it. Um, oh, but again, so this is, uh, f for what I know, the first thing that they've showed off, and, and by far, in my opinion, the most interesting and exciting thing that like I'm oh, like, totally. I have to try that. I um, want to play this game so bad. Does this mean there's going to be more of this? Uh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, come on. They're just going to build a demo and no just look like, uh. like, oh, we built this five-minute demo, and there's this, definitely not a game attached. This will sell HTC uh, Vive yeah, headsets. Yeah. I will buy one if they release a full Portal game. And again, I've been saying all they need to do is get a game that makes sense one that you don't want to put down, yep. and one that is an experience that you have to, have to, have Gotta to play. Have. And this is this is it. Yep. This is what we call the, the, the console seller. So this yeah. is like Halo for the Xbox. This is, you know, these are the games that make people buy hardware. And so, the, I mean, gosh, Portal, all they need now, Half-Life 3. That's all we need. Yeah, that's what I was saying, is any of those three games, Would Left 4 Dead 3, I any, mean, any of those, um, so I, I, I hate that it has to be an IP that we already know that's going to sell the consoles, Right. but it, it does kind of make sense to, for like us to want to explore a world that we already love. Yeah, in a new way. In a like new it's a way. New, it's all a new way. That's, so, I think that's the important So there thing. you go. Yeah, that's um, that's basically that's basically that. You can go check out the video. Again, it's five minutes. They narrate yeah. it. There's no sound. So this guy narrates it. Perfect narration. Yeah, super good. No slump. So, really this guy awesome is, narration. It's really well done. Yeah. But that brings us to our hashtag of the day for the last article. Yes, it does, which is uh, TD Bot Pilot. Uh, which I wanted to ask. I forgot. I'm sorry. I'm getting really bad about forgetting the hashtag. Because you were excited about Portal. I, I was really excited about Portal. Okay. Um, if you could pilot a robot, where what would you do with it? Where, what kind of robot would you pilot? What would you want to do? What would you want to take the robot and what would you want to do with it? Mm -hmm. Like if you could just pilot a robot around. And you can't say like autonomous, like oh I want a self-driving car. Like that's not the same. Like I'm talking about like a Ye like a Jaeger type robot where you get in and you like pilot it around and it walks and stuff. Uh, I'd probably say, do uh, Transformers have jetpacks? Like I mean, rocket packs? I mean, listen, if we're, if we're going yeah, for I it, Yeah, I want to just... pilot Starscream. Okay. Then. Yeah, so from the Starscream, Transformers, yeah. Starscream, because I'll, I'll have a jet, I'll have a robot that walks around, and I'm good. I yeah. like it. Yeah, that's what I, like I want. It. I would want a robot with a 3D printer attached that makes roads. That 3D prints me plastic roads so I can skip traffic. Just Ooh, nice. See you later, suckas. And then dissolves in the rain. Like, just... Like cotton oh, candy, what? like cotton candy. Like so that Spider Man spider webs. No yeah. one else can use it. It's just like basically, as soon as I drive over it, my emissions from my tailpipe just like wipe out the road behind me. Oh my That's god! What I want. Yeah, you're like Iceman when yeah. he like does like his little frozone. slides around. Yeah, frozen. <laughs> That's what I want. My frozen. You want to? You turn it to Disney. Sure. Yeah, turn it to Disney. All right. Uh, last story, but certainly not the least important. This is rad. 
Uh, okay, so we've talked about lab-grown organs before, right? So we've talked about people, uh, these scientists that are making some really interesting microscopic versions of the human body, and they want to connect them all together. They want to make like a nervous system and a brain and a heart and all this stuff. Well, that has always relied on scaffolding. So what they do is they um, they actually will like cell wash, like for example, a, a valve from a pig, like a heart valve. They actually cell wash it so that it can be transferred into a human body without uh, like more levels or possibilities of rejection. So yeah. they, they basically like make a scaffolding. They take all, they strip it. It's all, it's called like cell stripping, I think. They strip it and then they rebuild something like to make it for humans. Well, this is a first because UC Berkeley has now made a beating human heart with cells that were rewound, and I'll explain that in a second, without scaffolding. They, they, they taught these cells to make it themselves into a heart without any like scaffolding or structure that otherwise told them how what shape to make themselves it sounds in. gross let's see it. this is insane so this is uh it's microscopic you still i mean it's not obviously not nearly the same size as a human heart um what they did was again without pre-existing structures to help guide the cells the cells themselves figured it out uh, but they did make chemical sort of like no-go zones so they could tell the cells like, okay, well, you can build here, but you can't build here. So, but there was no scaffolding involved. There wasn't like a, a pre-made, like 3D printed, uh, you know, different, there's different types of materials that you can make, like polymers and things that are like a scaffolding. They didn't have any of that. The and what they that? did was, this is insane. So basically they imitated what happens when an embryo grows its own heart. Right, okay. Okay, crazy. And how they did this was, this is how I am to understand this, and hopefully I, I get this right, because I read the story a lot and was like, if I'm reading this right, they rewound ordinary human skin cells backwards to a point that is called induced pluripotent stem cells, which are basically like, they basically washed them or stripped them of the idea that they were skin cells. They took, they rewound them all the way back to a point where they could say, okay, now your heart cells, go make a heart. Science. So because, you know, you know, can't, you, because you, you science. Can't just making that. No, you're making that up. That's I just. I swear, that's, that's what it says. Hey, I'm gonna rewind these cells. They basically said, we're rewiring you. We've we've rewound these skin cells into cells that can be rewired to heart cells and go I, make yourselves into a heart right now. Like I, that's I, what they did. I don't much naysay and say that you're speaking magic words that are, aren't <laughs> true on this show. Yeah, it's, it makes. I feel like I'm speaking magic words, but that is what yeah. happened. That is what happened. And they want to make, their goal is now to make a full-sized heart. At some point, they want to make a full-sized heart. These stupid magic students. It's, I'm pretty it's, sure. Is this from Hogwarts? Sometimes, guys, science is really a lot like magic. I Honestly, I think the whole rewinding uh, the cells thing is, could lead to a lot of stuff. Yeah, well, they, so I'm they were saying like. I'm not even going to open like, that can of worms. It's, it, so, and it's a great way to kind of like take cells that exist without having, like, because I know there's a lot of controversy around like st embryonic stem cells. Like there's a big controversy there. So scientists have been for a long time trying to find other ways to sort of make cells that can go without having to use embryos, which is like very controversial. There's ethical issues involved, all this stuff. So that's sort of the thing where they're like, how do we uh, not use those? How do we find other ways to do this? And this is uh, one of those uh, ways to do that, I guess. Okay. Super weird. Not but true. You know, guys, science. One of these stories today wasn't true. Can you guess which one it Pick was? Which one? It was. It was definitely Portal. Uh, all right, guys, <laughs> uh, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. It's Tuesday. We gotta tell you what movies are coming out this week because no, there's no video games. And uh, and of course, we have your user feedback and our phone talker for the day. So don't click away. It's tomorrow daily. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We've returned. It's a Tuesday, which is always a great day because we get to tell you about some of the stuff that, that could be or probably won't be emptying our wallets. Uh, this is New Releases. So let's just, let's just get this out of the way. This is a thing that will not be emptying my wallet this weekend. Pixels is coming out. Nope. 
So I'm going to go see this movie, though. I'm not, I won't. I wait for it to show up on, like, I don't know, Lifetime or something. Okay, so describe it. the movie. With commercials. Describe this movie, and then I'll tell you why I'm seeing it. Is there a way to describe this movie? So, uh, basically, we sent a bunch of stuff into space that had, like a, a, like, a times capsule, and some of it was video games. And now aliens are back, and they are literally uh, video games. Like Pac-Man. And Pac-Man is now... As Adam Sandler says, which made me very upset, Pac-Man's a bad guy. There he is yeah, right there. He's saying that. Yeah, yeah. A bad guy. I hate it. Okay, so here's the thing. This movie was um, inspired by a internet video that came out, I want to say like six years ago, uh -huh. in which uh, like space invaders were attacking the city and turning everything into this digital thing. Yeah. But the reason that I'm going to see this movie, even though I hate most of the casts, um, except for Peter Dinklage. Yeah. He's going to be cool. Who doesn't love Peter Dinklage? Is because, honestly, this movie couldn't have existed in any other generation time. Like, 10 years ago, no, but, like, it wasn't until but now that, that Hollywood... It wasn't until now that gaming is accepted enough as something that we all understand that we can make a movie like this. Okay, I'm going to... And I know that's a really stupid way to, like, validate it. But I'm going to say this to you, which is... If it's a bad movie, you're setting back video game movies. Like, just like Super Mario Brothers. People were really excited about that movie. It ended up being a total mess, and it was awful. Everyone knew it was bad. And now Nintendo is like, we're never making another video game adaptation movie ever again. And all, and like, it's just, it set the precedent for like bad, like bad video game movies. And so for me, it's like, I don't want to see this. I want to see a good video game movie. I, I, well, I'm not saying. Wreck It Ralph. That's a good video game. Yeah, exactly. Okay, see, that's what, but that's what I'm saying is that it isn't based on one video game. It's celebrating video games as a culture. And I see what you're saying. Wreck-It Ralph did it right. But I don't want the studios to be like, oh, this is a terrible movie, so let's not make any more cool video game movies. But if it succeeds, it, I, then we might This movie will more... not succeed. Would you like to bet on this? Can we bet on box office for Pixels? Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to... Be I'm gonna bet that say it place does place on the box office. Forty? Is that you're gonna say forty million? Yeah. I'm gonna say it's this. It's an Adam Sandler movie. People go see Adam Sandler. They do movies. in fact see Adam Sandler movies. Um, I'm gonna say we'll see. Here's the thing. I don't want to give a number out because I like I would rather say what number it'll come in at the box office. I don't think it'll be number one at the box office. I think it'll be. I think it'll come in oh, second yeah. or third. There's like Minions. There's Ant Man. Still Minions. Got yeah. Ant Man. Still. Yeah. And then look, I'll, I'm not validating this movie's existence. I will not. I'm in my mind saying, okay, at least Hollywood is understanding that there that people like video games. It's a so culture that's universal. So let's make a game. Universal. Let's make a movie about games. And, and okay. I and I like that because ten years ago. Nobody would we have were celebrated an outlier. that. Yeah, we were yeah. an outlier. I get so, it. And, and that's the only re And also because I probably would have gone to see it. Because that, <sighs> that Pac-Man scene where he goes up and he's like, I'm your father. You're a good boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he bites his hand off. Oh, so um, what, what, do you, what do you want me to do? Should I just go? I want you to go. Should I go see it as a matinee and get paid the least amount? No, I want you to go see this instead. Southpaw with Jake Gyllenhaal. This is what you should go see this weekend if you want to go see a good movie. Uh, it's get down, you know, like it's a it's an underdog story. It's a boxing story. Apparently, Jake Gyllenhaal is so good in this. They say he's like a lock for best actor nomination for an oh, Oscar. Wow. Um, this guy, like Jake Gyllenhaal, got in such good shape for this movie uh, that I think it, they said it took him. He said it took like a year to get in shape Ooh. for this. Uh, Eminem did some of the soundtrack. He's got like a new uh, what is it? Phenomenal, like phenomenon. I don't know. I forget what the name of the song is. Phenomenal. Oh, okay. I was right. Uh, the first time. And so, yeah, he plays a boxer, and apparently it's really, really good, and people are raving about it, his performance in this. Uh, so if you want to spend your money this weekend, go see this. Uh, or if you like music. I was going to say. See what Kale's going to see this I'm weekend. I'm actually going to see this instead. Oh, okay. is it the next one? It is. Okay, so instead of seeing Pixels, I'm legitimately going to see Amy. This is the Amy Winehouse documentary. Uh, it has like a 98% on any of the review sites. Apparently There's, it's amazing. This is this was showed at South by, I think, and to just incredibly rave reviews. Yeah. She's, uh, look, look, as much, no matter what you think about her, apparently she's very misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this kind of breaks into sort of that sort of world. Yep. And with someone who seems so tortured, it's always great to kind of see inside that person, no matter if you hate them or love them, very to kind of understand. And she was a phenomenal musician. Yeah, I'm amazing. a huge Amy Winehouse fan. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing this. I was actually battling whether I want to see Trainwreck or this first, both of which are Trainwrecks. 
Um, no, but uh, Too soon. I, I really, 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 really want to see this. Everyone that yeah. I saw walking out of the because I went to go see Ant Man yesterday. Amazing. Everyone walking out of the theater was just like, I didn't hear their actual conversation. Yeah, no, but of course, but this. they were and, thumbs upping and yeah. they were high fiving and hugging each other. Yeah. And, yeah, it was amazing. You know, this is a very polarizing um, weekend for movies. It is. Yeah, there. It's like, man, you got to make some choices. Okay, so if you had to see one movie this weekend, I would go see Amy. Uh, Producer Logan. Ant-Man. Oh, come on. Yeah, that's fa fair, fair enough. enough. Fair enough. And I would probably also go see Amy. So, there you go. I uh, might see some. Maybe I'll see Southpaw. That I'll, does actually, I really want to see I'll that. go see Pixels. There's a $2 theater down the street go for me Go see that. Go month. see it then, yeah. Add, I'll to, go add there. $2 to the box office take in a couple months. Right. So that's a better idea. Okay, cool. All right, guys. Let's talk about you. It's time for user feedback. <laughs> Yeah, I also, I liked where that ended too. Um, we have Actually, that's, I want to know what people, uh, how it's going to stack up for yeah, people this week. Yeah, please tell us what movie you want to go the, see. If you're on the YouTube, because look, I read the YouTube comments, even you yeah. jerks. Go ahead and, and tell us what you're going to yeah. see there. Tell us, or you could tweet weekend. at us. Yeah, um, right, okay, sorry. so we asked you guys yesterday to use the hashtag TDFilmVR to tell us uh, what film, an like, upcoming movie you want a VR experience from and what would it be. Oh, this should um, be good. There's some good ones. So Frank wrote in and said, Pandora is meant to be explored using the Rift. Pause the film and explore the surroundings, Avatar 2. Too. That's a good one. That is completely possible. Yeah. Because yeah. he the way filmed they shoot it, it. He, he filmed it in a very VR way. He he created this technology in which he has kind of like this tablet thing, and they build the entire Pandora world, and he's able to use the camera as if he's looking through the world and film it like that. I did a behind the scenes experience with uh, James Cameron, oh. and he showed that technology off, and I was just like, "This is the future." And then they haven't used it since. Oh wow! <laughs> so maybe but, he owns it. Maybe he owns that technology. He's the only one who can use probably, it. Probably, but now all they have to do is just flip the switch and now you're in that world there so there you go great, great awesome one. will wrote in and said a flyover of the city as the monsters from pixels as they destroy everything so there you go fly over the city it's good finally someone else who's gonna go see pixels I, i'm I not proud like that. no i'm not proud of the fact that i defended it in any way i know but i'm but. trying to make a very thin point Okay. That's going to fall apart Fair enough. after the box office. Uh, Rick writes in and says, a VR experience for upcoming Sherlock Victorian special where you help Sherlock find clues to a case. I like that. It's like a hidden, you know those hidden object games where you have to like find stuff and like solve puzzles and things like that? Like that yeah. would be pretty cool. I'd love, honestly, like the seventh guest or the eleventh hour is like a VR game. Is that a scary one? I don't know. That. It was from like it was one of the old like um, trilobite games where you like it, yeah it was like uh, games where you'd like kind of go and you'd solve these puzzles and it was a real creepy house and it, oh man so 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 good. Yeah, you're very um, morbid. Yeah, deep deep cuts, guys. You get gaming deep cuts from me all the time. Tr old trilobite games. So welcome to 1992. Uh, and then uh, then Jesus wrote in and said it'd be cool to do a VR tour of the GQ tastic bat cave of bat versus bats versus soups, including a bat wing and bat cave. Joyride. That definitely also seems like it could happen. That seems like a good one. The Batcave I, tour. I, I feel like WB is in touch enough to kind of do something yeah, like that. I definitely think so. Warner Brothers seems like the kind of company who might take a risk. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so a really good. Also, I still I still like um, that guy's idea from yesterday about having a date with Harley Quinn through VR. That one oh, wait, guy? that was my idea. Yeah, that was definitely, uh, what was his name? It rhymed with Kale Anonymous, I think. <laughs> it, it rhymed with Kale sounds, Anonymous. Sounds close, that it doesn't sound Sounds familiar. like Kale Anonymous. All right, Anonymous. anyway, that's time for our last so piece good. of user feedback. Which, which is, is always our photographer of the day. All right, so we got a we got a picture from Andy, and this is something different than what we normally show. We usually we have like landscape pictures. Well, this flips it all around, and we have like a portrait almost. This is a really good portrait picture. So Andy wrote in and sent this lovely picture. Holy crap. Very artistic and said, hi guys. I took this picture last night of my husband and thought it turned out really well. I took it with my iPhone 6 Plus. Love the show. Keep up the great work. My Thanks, God. Andy. That's a great picture. It looks like it could be in an art gallery. That's You need that on a, a billboard shot by iPhone. Stop watching Tomorrow Daily and go get famous as a photographer. Yeah, geez, Andy. What are you doing with your life? That's incredible. No, it's a really good picture. I a love the lighting composure. and just the shadow. It's well, so good. And it's good. one of those ones where you can kind of like take your own like meaning from it, yeah. you know? Wow. It's like a Rorschach test. What do you see in that face? What do you see in that look person? At, uh, look at how well the, the, the camera picks up the, the skin. skin. Oh. I know. I know. I saw it this morning and I was just like, okay, wow. Like that's, that's wow factor. It's really good. Uh, if you want to try to beat that 
or if you have your own amazing phone photography you want to send to us, you can email us tomorrow at cnet.com, of course. Uh, or you can find us on social media. We're Tomorrow Daily on Twitter. Uh, but really, if you want to strike up a conversation with the show, you want to come to us individually. Yeah, come to us individually. Um, and if you, if you have any like conversations you want to have about Pixels, you can hit up at uh, Ashley at, at Ashley Esqueda. Yeah, or you I'll can, talk to you. Or you can hit up me at, at, at Kale Anonymous. At Pixel Pixels conversations movie. only. Yeah, only. Please don't, <laughs> please don't talk to Kale about anything else. Unless you're Margot Robbie and you would like to go on a date. Yes, please. In which case, please. Please, please contact me. Contact me. And I will figure that out for Kale. Oh man, that would be amazing if you set me up on I'll a bro I'll be your wingman, or... Kale. Okay, I'm, I'm an excellent wingman, I just want to say. All right, on that note, my friends, uh, our friends, that is the end of the show. We will be back tomorrow with a brand new docket of weird, wonderful science fact and science fiction blowing up in your face um, and, and doing all sorts of great things. But until then, be good humans, and we'll see you next time. Bye.